Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer Tryon. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You had a little um, musical interlude to get you down the three minute mark and uh, alert you all that we are going to be live making bathing suits tonight. Um, I don't know if you saw my post earlier, but lots of you were asking, how do we do it? How do you do it? I'm so scared to make bathing suits. I was right there with you, you guys. I was like, you know, I kind of would sew it sometimes and feeling a little bit nervous. Sometimes people um, um, help me sew things for shows and I'm like, you do the swim knit uh, and stuff like that. Um, but no, I was tackling the swimsuit and I'm so glad I did because it was, it was honestly, it was much easier than I thought. Definitely helps to have the right tools. The serger was the savior for sure. Um, having the right tools totally helped, but I'm gonna guide you through over the next three lives. So this is gonna be part one, Wednesday, seven o'clock, same time, same place. Part two, Friday, we'll finish it up, uh, part three. And I think we'll probably get through you know, a, a good chunk, but I, I'll tell you, I do think that you could make the bathing suit start to finish in less than three hours. And I really am gonna take you through every single step. I don't have anything made ahead of time. I'm gonna make it all with you live, which maybe at the end will make this wearable, maybe not, <laughs> but, but we'll try. All right, tomorrow, what's up? Got our first question. What's do up? Do you need a surger to do the bathing suit? Do you need a surger? Um, you do not need a surger, and I'm gonna show you on the sewing machine um, what you can do instead of the serger. However, um, I am using the serger and the sewing machine because it is quite a bit easier, quite a bit easier to use the serger. But follow along and you'll see where you can totally use um, your regular sewing machine. And I really, really thought that it was just going to jam down into the throat plate or into the um, stitch plate uh, as soon as I started using swim knit, but having the right needle, having the right uh, foot. Um, and I'm by no stretch using uh, a top of the line machine here. I'm just going to like jump over here to show you. Sorry, Karen. Um, I'm the, I had my pop. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I use the Janome 100th uh, anniversary uh, serger because I'm really trying to break this in. Sorry, you'll see my little uh, silhouettes of the kids there. That was a cricket project. Um, I haven't moved it yet. Anyway, this little baby is amazing. Love this little serger. Use this. You're gonna want swim elastic. We're gonna go through everything you're gonna need. Um, but I just wanted to show you, I sewed everything on the Janome 4120. That's this uh, machine here. Um, I've been using these machines lately because they're the last ones I had on the shopping channel and um, they're still there. They're still on sale all month. So if you're kind of in the mood uh, and you're wanting a serger or you're wanting um, a great little second machine or even a first upgrade machine. Honestly, this this the this little machine, I love it. It handled the swimsuits no problem. So we'll get to it. I just wanted to let you know what it was that I had been using to sew them. Um, but you can totally sew a swimsuit with just this machine. The same way you could melt chocolate on the stove, or you could put it in the microwave like the serger and have it go, you know, even faster without all the stirring. Um, that's how I would liken that. So these are the suits that uh, I've made. Uh, for me and for uh, my daughters. And, you know, they're not perfect. It's, they're not perfect, but they are cute. And nobody noticed, you know, the little like, oh no, I slightly, you know, missed my zigzag stitch here or I over didn't totally overlap it. Um, it. It worked out just fine. And you can see I've got like, I don't know, can you see? I'm kind of showing you right up top here. Um, the zigzag stitch on the regular sewing machine and then that surge stitch um, underneath, and then the elastic is under there. So we're gonna get to all of that. Um, I've only got scraps of this gorgeous palm swim knit uh, left. So I've got some other swim fabric, just a solid uh, in case sewing and talking doesn't turn out to be uh, <laughs> my strong suit. Um, but I do want to introduce you to Erin Omak, who is, you know, we got talking, she's from Janome, and we got talking the other day about, hi, Erin. Hi, Jen, uh, how are you? 
I'm great. We got talking the other day about uh, I'm making swimsuits. I'm going to make a swimsuit. I'm going to make my daughter swimsuits, me swimsuit. And Erin is really an expert at sewing swimsuits. So I wanted to have her here with me as my sort of like my phone a friend. <laughs> totally. Definitely. I, I, I stumble <laughs> along the way or you have some real expert tips for people. So as I'm cutting and talking about, you know, my experience sewing up these swimsuits, please feel free to interject and say, hey, Jen, you know what? How about this or try that or don't forget this? Because I think everybody would benefit from, you know, my, I'll say knowledge, <laughs> I have some knowledge, <laughs> and your depth of knowledge. Sure. I'm up for it. Let's play. Yeah. So tell me, while I get my fabric out here, have you made, sure. a, you've made a lot of swimsuits? I've made a few. Yeah. Um, actually my very first swimsuit attempt was when I was a teenager, um, which was a long time ago and I don't have it anymore, but it was interesting. Um, well, no one fits into their teenage swimsuits anymore. Those right? are the first to go. <laughs> totally. Um, but I did snag, um, a bathing suit top that I made my daughter, okay. uh, unicorn fabric. And it's, I used my serger and I, it has ties. Um, so I did pick up, you know, some handy tips when I was doing this one for sure. Um, totally. it was lots of fun. Definitely. Well, you know, swimwear is one of those things where it's like, no, not going there. That's, that's really even experienced sewers. So for anyone watching, let us know, have you sewn a swimsuit before, or are you going to be willing to try? Um, because that's what I want to know. Like I, I can tell you, I've sewn on Swimknit on the serger many times in demos and made, you know, swimsuits for shows and stuff, but not to actually wear for my own body where I'm taking my own measurements, kind of making it a little bigger up top and a little bigger, mm -hmm. you know, so that it fits. And I got to say, yeah. when I went through the pattern, I was like a large here, some, and some places I was a double X and then other places. So it's like, mm, mm -hmm. you know. These are things that when you're buying a swimsuit at the store, usually mean it doesn't always fit that great. But that's the beauty of making your own. You can do those kinds of adjusting, right? Absolutely, yeah. And I've always, I've, I've done a lot of different grading for different patterns because even, even when, before I had kids, I never fit into the same size on all my areas. So, being able to use a, an indie pattern like what you're using and to be able to grade it to fit you, um, that's a real skill. And it's actually, it's relatively simple to learn how to grade between sizes so that you can get that perfect custom fit. So what I noticed too, and let's just like stop and tell people what pattern I'm using. Um, I'm using the uh, Minute Mayotte Um pattern from Patterns for Pirates. Uh, we'll put it up in the, sorry, the title page, I used it as a scrap, but so you're not really seeing the, the picture of the title, but it comes with a full uh, written tutorial every step of the way. It was easy to follow. We'll put a link in the comments to the pattern. Um, you know, we're not getting paid for this, to endorse this pattern. I just used it. It was a good basic pattern. Um, so I can recommend it because that's what I made for my suits. I chose the mid back because there's a couple of options here. Um, I'll show you up top um, to go like sort of plunging neckline, uh, mid or high. I probably should have went mid. It was a little plungy in the photos, I gotta say. Um, a little too plungy. And it also made a note here that the pattern was drafted for an average height of 5'5". Five five. So that's something to think about, right, Erin? Because I'm, like five eight, and so if this is drafted for someone who's five five, then I might be kind of like in the crotch a little, like it might be pulling me down. Yeah, I it might actually, be some wedgies there, and that's not so comfortable. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we are going to get a little intimate in this live, you guys, because we got to talk about, you know, we got lift it up and keep it in and not be, you know, showing totally. it too much. Or maybe we do want to show it. Maybe go for the plunger. Hey. I, I mean, I did. I went for the plunging one. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm getting my picture taken with this on. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? <laughs> Tamara, question. What is the size range of the pattern? Yeah, so it goes from extra, extra small uh, right up to 3X. Um, and the 3X measurement in the bust 
um, goes up to 54 inches uh, and 58 inches in the hip. Um, so there's quite a span on the sizes. I also um, bought the bundle, the mini Mayout for youth and the adult one. So the kids wore size 14. Um, so it goes like right from like two up to size 14. Um, I probably could have gotten them into an extra small or small. I didn't even think of that. And plus I like some supporting small shops and stuff. So I, I bought the, the bundle. Um, well, okay. Yeah. Can, can I tell you something about, uh -huh. about patterns just while you're doing Please. that? Um, so what's really cool about patterns for pirates is their, their sizing even if you can get a child into the adult sizing, their like tween sizing is really good because okay. sometimes with adult sizes, um, they're either too low or there there's too much room in the chest area for maybe um, a child that fits into the adult size but isn't like the right shape. So I do love that they have that combination of the youth and the adult. It's true. It's true. Because even when we're shopping at the store, my kids who are, you know, 11 and 12 years old, you know, they can sometimes fit into the women's small, but it is like they don't have the hips. They don't have the chest, yeah. you know, so it is true. So if you're watching as I'm talking here, I've laid down the first of my pattern pieces. I'm going to leave you guys to print out and tape together or glue together your pattern um, whatever swimsuit pattern you decide on. Um, and a lot of them are going to follow these same rules, which is basically cut on the fold, making sure that your salvage, um, is running with your pattern. Um, like this is the, the greatest stretch gain or sorry, grain. Um, so when I'm pulling it, I'm not going to pull this right now because this is laying down. Um, but your stretch, it obviously swim knit is what you're going to be using here. And it's got a great four way stretch, but even with the four way stretch, there is a side that pulls a little bit more than the other side. So East West is what I kind of like to do from the salvage is the good side. That's, that's the side you want your, um, pattern to be showing, uh, with the arrow and I'm keeping my salvage and I'm cutting on the fold which of course, if you've ever made anything, any sort of clothing, you know that you're basically getting equal sides on both sides by cutting on the fold. So make sure that you line your pattern piece up. And I'm a little off the camera here, so maybe Karen can get it here. Um, the pattern has um, notches. Um, the only notch on this pattern is right in the crotch. And that little notch, um, this I found very helpful for um, piecing the liner and the main fabric together. Um, so just make sure if the pattern has notches that you don't just skim over those because later on when we're assembling this, that little notch, I'm just putting a little, like it's a, like a little V, um, make sure you keep that in. So this is the uh, back of the swimsuit that I'm cutting here. And then I'm gonna cut the front next. And I'm gonna do the same with the lining. And I'm using the rotary cutter. You could totally use scissors. I just find the rotary cutter, I don't know, Aaron, what do you, what do you like cutting with the scissors or the rotary cutter when you're cutting out um, um, patterns like this? It, it kind of depends. It depends on um, like my, the space that I have to work in. It depends if I'm using tuna cans to hold the pattern down or not. Um, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, tuna cans make like the best pattern weights. And so no one eats tuna at my house. So I use them as pattern weights. Um, and I and I do like the rotary cutter, but I actually typically use a smaller one for when I'm cutting clothing. I find I can get into the curves a little, just a little bit better with that um, just one size down from the one that you have. Yeah, I think that's probably a good call. Um, yeah, Tamara. Going back to the fold, the fold as it comes off the bolt. So let's let's do it together here. So here's how you would probably look at your fabric when you got it at the store with the salvage right here. Like there's the salvage. So you're gonna fold it. And then my second front piece, we're gonna cut on the fold. Okay. 
Now, I want to make sure that this, um, that I'm not wasting all of this fabric like right here. So I'm going to pull my fold over and that's sometimes why I turn it towards me. And then so that it's just a little bit easier to pull the fold. And so I'm not wasting as much fabric when I lay it down. If you don't have um, a cutting table, which most people I would say probably don't have a cutting table, but I feel very lucky to have this cutting table. Um, use your dining room table, use the floor, use whatever big surface you got. Um, I think they still have these ones at TSC. It's the uh, Arrow Kangaroo Cutting Table. I love this table. It's exactly the right height, has the mat that uh, fits. All right, I'm just using my pin bowl to hold down my pattern, but I love that idea with the tuna cans. So there's the salvage. I could probably pull it just a little bit more. There's the salvage and there's the fold. And this is where the pattern says fold. Look at my janky uh, taping job. I could not find any tape, so I had to use washi tape. So, oh well. I think it's so uh, pretty though. <laughs> well, it's such a waste. I like it. But honestly, I have so much washi tape that it's like good that it gets used for something. Um, Tamara, question: Is there an easy way to adjust the length? So, what, Aaron? You tell me because let me show you guys what I did. Sure. Um, this actually, I can show you with my washi tape, because at least it peels off easy. Um, because this pattern says it was drafted for someone who was 5'5", five five, and I'm 5'8", I thought, oh gosh, this is going to be long in the body. So I added um, a good two, two and a half inches right down the middle, or right through the middle, so that I, it would have a longer body for me. Erin, what would you recommend doing? So definitely you want to make sure that you have someone measure you. Um, yeah. And those measurements are really important. Uh, usually on patterns, there's usually an adjustment line for when you have to make an adjustment sort of above the waist and then one usually at like the hip area. So okay. if there's only one in the middle, that's fine, but you want to measure yourself and then measure the pattern and see where you need to add. Okay. Um, and so like for me, because I'm short waisted and you can't really tell that by how I'm standing here in the video, but I always have to take um, length out so that the natural waist sits at my waist. Right. So for me, I needed to put length in. Yep. So that and the way you did it is perfect. So that like I wouldn't be all hunched over and having it pull down too much on the shoulders because maybe I'm a little bit taller than, I don't know if I'm taller than most, but just a little bit taller. Well, you're definitely taller than I am. <laughs> well, so I added that so that there'd be a little bit longer, but you're right. Look for those um, allowance lines. Definitely. So, yeah. So I'm just finishing cutting it out here and take your time with this part because you know, when, when it matches up a little better, you'll be thankful. I have another so is now a good time to talk about um, grading between sizes? Sure. Just hang on one second. Tomorrow, what's yeah. the question? Sorry. Uh, where is the best place to find swim knit in Ontario or Canada? So there's tons of online retailers that have swim knit or uh, <laughs> claim to have swim knit. Things are very tough right now in terms of stock. Erin, um, do you want to talk to this a little bit? I know you've got yeah. some swim knit on your website. Yeah, and... I do. Go ahead. Um, so I've got swim on my website and um, Jen, you can put the link in if you want um, yeah. to my website. A lot of um, fabric companies in Canada are, they do custom printing. And so we can actually get really nice, good quality swim fabric. I mean, that being said, not all swim is created equal. Um, if you are looking for the most budget friendly swim, it may not last the same length of time as a higher quality swim would. Uh, the other thing to look for is whether or not the swim fabric has any sort of SPF rating. A lot of swim that is available now has a 50 SPF rating, which is really nice for, um, you know, being out in the sun, being at the lake or at the pool. 
and you just, you know, then you sunscreen your skin and the bathing suit protects the rest of your body. Um, but there are actually lots of places to find swim knit. Um, and I can definitely, Jen, I can send you a link of um, yeah. swaps for sure. Yeah, for sure. There, I mean, there's lots of online shops that do. I had a very hard time, I'll tell you, finding extra swim knit. I had the palm fabric, which I think was, I got like a while ago, right, Tamara? Like two years ago, maybe? Because Tamara, every summer, is like, when are you making a bathing suit? <laughs> and I'm like, any day now, any day. Um, so I've been kind of just sitting on it. And so I, I, I hate to use stuff that, like, and especially when I knew I would post it, but it's also like, I can't let it sit here either. And sometimes stuff mm -hmm. sits in your stash for like years, right? <laughs> well, and it's but important to mention that because actually with, with swim fabric um, and elastic, anything that has like lycra in it and it sits, um, that can actually end up breaking down. So you want to make sure that you have, wow. relative, you know, relatively new-ish, you know, supplies so that <laughs> you don't go and put it on and have unfortunate incidents yeah. in front of small children. Right? All right, well, that is actually a, a good, good point. I did use my old, this old swim knit, so let's hope it's well, fine. You're but, probably okay. You're probably okay. New elastic. So maybe that's the, good. The hardest working part <laughs> will be okay. Um, I also got new liner. So that mm -hmm. palm fabric, which I, you know, I love, but I mean, it's I'm white. impressed. I'm it's impressed. white. You know what I mean? Like, we got to line this. So for the kids, I lined it not with just bathing suit liner. I lined it with white swim knit. And I don't know if that's a no-no or not, but when I was shopping for liner, I, I just felt like I could still see through this white. And when I used the white swim knit underneath, I couldn't. So, but I did buy regular liner too, because in mine that I made, I also lined it in white swim knit, but mine has the, the bra shelf in it. And I put, these are black because they're the only ones I had, but that's how good uh, lining it with the white swim knit did because you really couldn't see my black uh, cups that I sewed in. And so I am going to get to showing you how to sew these in. Um, hopefully we get to it tonight, but we've got three nights in case you're just tuning in uh, where I'm going to break down exactly how to sew uh, a swimsuit. And anyway, I just wanted to kind of point out that I used both, uh, traditional lining um, and actual swim knit for the lining. But that was because this bathing suit was so light and white that I just didn't want to take the chance of it being see-through, especially when it was wet. Um, so yeah, that's but what I did. The other, the other cool thing about doing that, Jen, is that you're going to have a swimsuit that is going to last longer, right? And it you're going to have a swimsuit that is quality. comfortable to wear. And really you're going to feel it, good. Yeah. It I couldn't believe it actually, because I've bought a lot of swimsuits at like, you know, the grocery store, <laughs> like in Canada, there, you know, how some stores just have like, oh, look, swimsuits. Okay. That, that's one. only okay if you're on a tropical vacation. <laughs> I know. And you forgot it or something. Yeah. But, you know, I've also bought, sorry, I just need some uh, weight here on the end of this. Maybe I do need your tuna cans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've also bought really expensive swimwear where they like measure you and they bring you the suit and it's like $300, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, we're, we're meeting in the middle here. This, I can tell you when I made it felt like the $300 one because it was so well lined and fit yeah. in all the right spots. Um, but it, it did not cost $300. I mean, fabric is expensive. Anybody that sews knows this. Um, but nowhere close, nowhere close to $300. Well, right. what's nice about, about buying swim fabric is a lot of times, especially when you are sewing for small people, um, you don't need that full meter of fabric just for one swimsuit. So maybe you spend 30 or $35 on a meter of swim fabric, but then you're able to get, you know, three swimsuits out of it. So well, those swimsuits have cost you like $10. Well, and not only that, what I realized is I didn't have enough um, palm fabric to make another one piece 
because there was sort of bits and bites left over from all the different spots, but there's definitely enough for two piece. Um, yes. A couple of two pieces, exactly. Especially for the kids. Yeah. I'm not gonna dare go into a two piece. <laughs> this was bad enough. Um, but there was definitely enough left over for two piece for the kids for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and they, we have a pool. So let me tell you, they change their bathing suit like 10 times a day and then they just chuck it. <sighs> That's another uh, story. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, well, there is something I can do about it, but it just doesn't awesome. seem to work. Um, anyway, yeah, needless to say, we always need tons of bathing suits. Plus people come over and maybe they didn't think they were gonna swim. Um, but now we have like an extra bathing suit. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. And once you have a pattern that you know fits you and that you know fits the people in your life, you can just keep making the same pattern over and over and then change it up by adding ruffles or a fun um, stretch vinyl applique. Totally. Or, you know, like there's lots of fun things you can do once you get that golden fitting pattern. Uh, totally, totally. I agree. All right, I'm just gonna fold this um, again and I'll be cutting out the front lining now. Someone was asking if you made your own top. Did I make this top? No, I actually did not make this top, but when I got this top, I was like, I could totally make that top. <laughs> I mean, people that sew or craft is this, is this not something we say to ourselves like multiple times a week? I could totally make that. Huh. I can't believe I bought that. Or one. like you're in Costco and you're getting groceries and there's leggings for $8. And you're like, um, I can't make leggings for $8. So this is okay. I know. But I actually just, I struggle so much with that because I'm like, I know. Even the $8, I know I've got that material already at home. And so mm -hmm. I really should use it up rather than like spend the $8. And so we end up having no leggings instead of having even $8 leggings. That's, that's it where. It happens to all of us. Don't feel bad. Yeah, we'll that's, where, that's where I, that's, that's the place that I live most often is in the, the limbo of I'm going to do it. I swear. But that's why I had the swimsuit material for two years. But look. I finally did do it. All right, I am, did I just cut out this one? Let's just make sure I'm not cutting two of the same one. I kind of like it when I've, yes I did, look at that. Good thing I checked. I kind of like it once the pattern comes out because look, you can tell this is gonna sew up really quickly because there's the, there's the front lining, there's the back lining. Um, I guess I kind of thought the swimsuit was gonna be like far more involved than what it really turned out to be. Now I will say doing the bra shelf in it is a little more involved than the kids ones that were just lined. Um, and so just keep that in mind. The kids ones you can just whip up. Uh, the ones with the bras in them are a little, there's that extra process, which I would say, you know, creating the bra shelf is pretty important for most of us, um, but maybe not critical. But if it is, just leave yourself a little bit more time and recognize that like, you might do the bra shelf first um, and then uh, move on to like the actual swimsuit, like another night or whatever, if you're making it over the course of a week, which is probably what's gonna happen with us here tonight. I'm gonna get this cut out and um, I'm gonna cut out the bra shelf lining and I'm gonna start by showing you how to um, sew those cups in, or at least how I did it. I'm sure there's lots of ways that people can, can do it, but I'll show you how I did it. And Erin, please feel free to, to chime in if there's a, a way that you know works better or differently. Um, you know, and people sure. kind of find their way. People well, find their way. The other thing I was going to say about once you, you know, if you get that practice with putting in bra cups into a bathing suit, you're already set up to make other perhaps more scary things like like bra. an actual bra. Oh, boy. yeah. Could you like, imagine? I have they're amazing. Made. Have you made your own bra before? I have. And I'm <sighs> it's actually 
I, it's under my shirt. <laughs> really? Okay. I, yeah. won't, I won't make you show us, even though I want to say so. <laughs> Fine. I won't say that. Um, um, but is it like the swimsuit where you're like, huh, this is really comfortable. So comfortable. Like yeah. I will not go and buy a bra again. Really? Now that I've got my fit. It's, yeah. Like it's, it's a little time intensive because you do have to make sure you have that fit and that's where that grading comes in and accurate measuring. Yeah. Um, that's really important when you're sewing things that are going to end up being really close to your body yeah. is you have to make sure that you're measured properly. But if you can, if you can make a bathing suit, you can definitely make a bra. Okay. Well, maybe we'll have to do another one of these series. Yeah. Uh, that'd that'd what do I have to wear the bra in the picture next? The bathing no. suit was bad enough for God's sakes. No, you just, you just like, like lay it out nice on like something and add stuff to it. Like a flat or, lay. You don't have to or maybe it. I'll just, whatever. Here we are. What do you think? <laughs> well, you know, if there's no boys here, I could, you know, totally show you my bra. But yeah, uh, yeah. There's, always, on, friends. There's, there's always that, um, that scary moment of, do I actually want to do this? No, of I'll course not. Don't do it. it. Don't do it. It's all right. All right. I dropped my pattern and I think some bra cups went flying. Tomorrow, go ahead. Diane has a question for Erin. Okay. Uh, do sure. you teach how to make your own bra? You know what? That is something I can totally do. And I am going to be partnering up with um, someone who I'm sure you all know in the sewing interest industry. Her name is Liz. And I'm, I'm going to be partnering up with her soon to do some more teaching. Um, and bras is on our list. It's nice it's a skill that that um, need, people need to learn because it's I don't know. I find it so difficult to go into the mall and try on a bra and then have it come home and it doesn't fit and you can't return it. And what am I going to do? And and well, these days when you know. can barely even get to the mall or the mall's not even open. Yeah. And, or you get there and the fitting rooms aren't open and you know what I mean? So yeah. I found it very helpful with the bathing suit um, to go and try it on at various stages Definitely. of the sewing process. Um, just to make sure before it got too far down the path that it was still the measurements, like hadn't, hadn't gotten any bigger in the last yeah. hour, basically. That, that um, typically doesn't happen unless you cut something out and leave it you know, for a year or two, right, which I've right. done and I finally <laughs> finished it and I tried it on and then I put it in the garbage. Oh no. It's okay. It wasn't that good. Oh, okay. So uh, this, you can see I'm cutting out of the lining also, which is the front bust lining and there's a back bust lining. And I wanted to point out that for the shelf, I actually, even though it only said to cut one, later in the tutorial when I was reading the pattern, it said you could cut another one. And I found that it really worked well to sandwich the bra cups in between um, the, the lining, even though there's gonna be a separate lining in the suit, that this had its own um, extra lining too. Um, so I'm gonna cut two of the front, uh, bust lining out, and then I'm going to cut um, the back. Does that make sense to you, Erin? Yeah, definitely. You can also use something called power mesh for yes. lining. Um, and if you're not going to put cups in like what you're doing, having a layer of power mesh is really going to help with the support um, on your body because it's it's, it's, it's meant to be like Spanx, but it doesn't hurt your pancreas. It just sort of holds everything in so that it's not, you know, flailing yeah. around. I didn't good. have any Aren't power mesh. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any power mesh and I couldn't get any sort of fast enough. So I thought, okay, yeah. I'm going to, this is, this but is my But two layers of swim, like two yeah. layers of swim fabric will still give you enough support yeah. with the cups, right? It's still exactly. a good, what you're doing is good. So there's my two, and then I'm just gonna do one uh, for the back. So is the lining also swim knit? So I got this at Lens Mills, and interesting, because I said to the woman at the counter, um, I'm looking for swim lining, and she said, you can use anything. And I thought, but why? Doesn't it need to be able to stand up to the chlorine? Um, what do you think about that, 
uh, Aaron, that she said, here, choose from this lining. And it wasn't necessarily um, the swim. So the, the, I have used swim lining for like a whole ba a whole bathing suit, but in the like crotch area of a bathing suit, I typically will look for a cotton lining. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, if you're going to the beach or you're going to the pool for, for the day or the water slides and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, you do have to be careful of different parts of your body that are maybe a little more sensitive. So right. I would, I would put cotton in the crotch area for sure. Okay. But right. anywhere else, swim line, swim lining is good or yeah, or swim lining. Good. Yeah, swim lining. So uh, this was sort of like mixed in. She knew I wanted swim, um, but I do think if like this does feel like swim lining. Um, but I do think it, in a pinch, like I would use this as like a slip because it, it is four way stretch, which is really yeah. what you want. Regular dress lining. You wouldn't use yeah. it. It's not, it's not stretchy. Um, so, but I could see if I needed to use this as a lining to like a stretch skirt that was a little see-through, mm. I, I think you could use it for stuff other than swim too. Yeah. And you can also get like from other shops anywhere that has like an athletic knit or what they call an athletic knit. Mm -hmm. Um, those are a little bit heavier weight than just a regular swim. And so they're going to stand up really nice for things like rash guards. And, um, you know, if you wanted to make um, those Bermuda shorts, like if you're going scuba diving or anything like that. Right, right, right. And it's definitely, definitely heavier. Okay, so I've got my um, pattern pieces cut out here. Um, let's just move the, the pattern. So I've got one back lining uh, for the bra. And then I've got a back, show me where you are, here we are. Then I've got the back of the actual swimsuit lining. I've got the back of the swimsuit. Oh, this is the front of the swimsuit and the back of the swimsuit. So I know the cutting is a little bit laborious and I probably could have done that ahead of time. Um, but I just think when you're starting something new, it doesn't hurt to just see it done start to finish so, so that you know, yep, I am doing it right. Um, and sometimes even though we might take, you know, cutting out something like the pattern, you know, for granted, like, okay, I can cut out the fabric easily. Um, you know, it gives us a chance to say, yeah, I'm cutting two of these out and why. Uh, one backing and using a full uh, knit, uh, swim knit in some versus just the, the knit lining. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my big pieces aside. And let's, um, now if I was not putting the bra shelf in, we literally could just start sewing this up right now. And honestly, we would have this probably done by 8.30. Like it, this is the longest part of, if you're not putting the bra in, is just cutting it out. It sews up pretty fast after this. Um, it's the bra part that um, takes a little bit longer. So let's get started on that and uh, see where we get. Okay, so there's my front. You can kind of see uh, the low plungy <laughs> neckline that I chose. Um, I probably should have <laughs> amended it while I could, but I didn't. I'll send you some lace. I'll send yeah. you some lace and you can just like put a little lace in the top and you'll be good. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you're going to want to have cups. Sorry, I'm, I've, I've dropped one of the cups here. At some, it's somewhere. Um, there was a question about the cup. Okay, Tamara, what's the question while I look for the other cup? Do you use a special type of cup insert for swimwear? Um, yes. You want to have something that stands up to chlorine. Hold on. Uh, we're just looking for the other cup that has fallen somewhere. It's where? I've got, I've got my cups handy if you want yeah. to show them. Yeah, show, show us your cups. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I have these ones. They're from Dritz. And I think yep. I got them. They might have come from Amazon. I'm not sure. But they're they're quite sturdy like they're not super bendy so yeah. they are going to give you that good support the other thing that you can do is is you can harvest the the cups from a bathing suit that is uh that you don't have anymore like you want to get rid yeah. of it throw it out that's what save i did and save the clasp in case you yeah. want to do something with a clasp 
that's what I did here. I totally stole these out of an old bathing suit yep. that we didn't need anymore. And I'm actually not a fan of having the big moldy cups. I would rather it actually just be like no cups at all, but I don't mm -hmm. want it to be see-through. So I'm quite happy to have, even though these are like <laughs> so tiny compared to <laughs> what's happening here. Um, it's, okay. it's mostly for me about the coverage versus the actual right. support because I don't really like that big cupped look. Um, yeah. So this is mostly so that you can't see through it or, or like for coverage, if I'm like freezing cold, let's say. Um, yeah. So here and they're also the handy. Yeah. There, there's one more thing before you you go on. They're also yeah. very handy for if um, you're doing any sort of like sports in the water. Yeah, they do give you a little bit of extra protection if you're you know playing pig in the middle and you you go diving for something. That's happened oh, to right. me. That's um, a good call. Yeah, I find even though I don't really love these, I. I do appreciate them from time to time too. No, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it's, you know what, to each their own, either you want to totally, yeah. why when you make your own bathing suit, you've got that kind of choice. Do you want a big cup? Do you want no cup at all? I mean, mm -hmm. this is what's great about being able to choose for yourself. Tamara. Can you cut down the larger cups? You can do whatever like you want. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using, these were in like a size 12 bathing suit. Like they're from my daughter's old bathing suit. Wait, um, so use what you like. These ones, I will say they are shaped for left and right. So <laughs> if, I know it's weird. It's like that totally weird. weird. But if you are going to cut down um, a, a set of swim cups that you've purchased, uh, just make sure that you're cutting them down in the right shape so that you don't end up with like two left, right? <laughs> two left boobs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling a scam on this. I'm saying some sort of marketing, some man in the marketing department of the, the bra swimsuit bra makers Alliance said, I know what will make them buy a set. We'll call it left and right. <laughs> Maybe I'm totally wrong. That's funny. It's okay. funny though. So um, let's take a look at what I'm doing here. I want my pins and we're going to get to the first bit of sewing. Um, and that's to sew in your actual cup. And I'm just gonna use a zigzag stitch. Um, the machine we're using tonight is the Janome uh, 4120. And um, that's a I, great machine. I love this little machine. You know, I have, you know, I'm so lucky to get to use so many nice sewing machines along the way because sometimes I'm on HSN and they've got this one or I'm on the shopping channel and they've got that one. And so I get to play around. And recently I was on the shopping channel in Canada and this machine was on and um, it's on. So I was on a few weeks ago, but the machine itself, because it was called a blockbuster, that means they keep the price, like they keep it on sale for the whole month. Um, so the price is still on sale. I think it's regular somewhere around like 1500 uh, for this little machine. And I know you might be going like, what, 1500? That's such a small machine. Um, this machine has all of those great features that you've got in like your S3, your S7, like the scissors, the alphabet, multiple decorative stitches. Um, but it's, I think it's on sale for $9.79 and they're still doing the payments. Like, so you can spread your payments out. Honestly, it's just, it's, it's a good little machine. And so it doesn't have as big a footprint as some of the, the higher end machines, but you're not sacrificing. So I've had a couple people write me when I told them I sewed it on this machine saying, I love this little machine. This is a machine I, I have as my second machine or this is a machine I have at the cottage because I don't want to bring my big, big, you know, 15,000 or S9 or something like that. Um, and this little guy really does the trick. Um, and you, without having to sacrifice like the scissors or the speed control uh, or any of the computerization. So you're get, still getting tons of stitches. Um, you still even can go ahead and, you know, put someone's name in their swimsuit. Uh, I actually should have mm. done that since I made matching ones for my daughters. Um, but you could do that because you've got the alphabet. So yeah. Oh, I see Liz Thompson is right on this live. I can see her in the questions. Hi, Liz. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. I hope you're proud of me for making a bathing suit. 
Okay, um, I'm choosing the zigzag stitch here. Go ahead, Tamara. How do you know the exact spot to put the cups? So you want to make sure that you're at least, and I'm pushing them even a little further into the middle than I did with last with my with my other ones. Um, I would line them up to be perfectly honest when you've got a bra on and see exactly where you kind of need them. This is why you're making it yourself. So you can like poke and prod and be like, yep, there they are. <laughs> and I would center them just like that. The pattern itself said to kind of center them in the middle, make sure it was about an inch and a half away from the sides. And I followed the pattern last time. And when I put the bathing suit on, I really felt like the cups were a little too far out. So this time I knew to put them right in the middle, hold it up, kind of feel where you're gonna need them and where it's going to lie. And that's where I put them. So that's what I love about making it yourself is that you truly do get to customize it. So um, maybe I'll show you the inside of this one just because you'll see how much further out um, the cups sat. So this is kind of where the pattern said, like just an inch from, uh, from the end, which is what I did. Um, and I did it on that side too. And then I found when I had it on that the cups really were more like they're starting right here and I wanted them to start kind of more in the middle. Um, and they were doing a lot of side, a lot of side boob coverage. So I, <laughs> so I think you, you leave that up to, up to your own. What do you think, Erin? Um, yeah, definitely. You want to hold that that uh, piece of fabric up to your body and you could even um just like use straight pins to pin it to the shoulders of your bra straps or the shirt you're wearing just mm -hmm. so that it's it's secure and then yeah you just want to you know feel around you know it's the only time it's ever okay to cop and feel. <laughs> yeah so i'm basically just zigzag stitching right around the perimeter of uh, the cup. And I could probably up my stitch um, length a little bit. I'm going up to, I just put it up at 3.5. That's maybe a little big. Three, let's see. That's probably better. You want the zigzag stitch um, because it maintains the stretch. Um, but I don't want to be here all night with a tiny little zigzag stitch. What do you think, Erin? Yeah, zigzag is good. And yeah, yeah I mean, is the beauty of a zigzag stitch is that it does allow for that flex. So you want you do want to have it, you know, you don't want it so small that it would be absolutely horrible to pick out if you had to. But you also don't want to baste it either, right? So three is exactly. good. Exactly. And I am back stitching. And I'll just show you up, up close here. You can kind of see the difference between uh, like the stitch length that the machine um, automatically came with, which is the 1.5, uh, which is right here, which honestly is fine. Can you see? And then I just switched it to the larger, about a three. Um, you could split the difference even, but honestly, I don't think it's going to make that big a difference. Um, it's maintaining the stretch. What I didn't love using, Aaron, and tell me if I'm you know wrong here, I didn't love using a stretch stitch. Why exactly? I don't know. I just felt more comfortable with the zigzag. I felt like I got less um, puckering. I mean, I got no puckering with the zigzag. And I just thought I can, I'm sticking with the zigzag. Yeah, I can think? see that. Um, especially with swim, because swim is quite densely woven. And so when, you, when you're using a traditional stretch stitch, like a lightning stitch or an overcasting stitch, um, it's good when you're, when you're sewing it, but then if you ever have to go back and take it out, it's a little bit more challenging. So yeah. I think a zigzag is good. Definitely. I like the zigzag. It's, it's laying nice and flat. It doesn't take as long, that's for sure. Um, and it was just, it was easy. I really expected like sewing on, like I did not expect my regular sewing machine, like this little, um, 4120. Um, to just do as well with the knit as it's doing. Like you can see it's lying nice and flat. There's no puckering at all. I have the benefit of like the lock stitch that I can lock that in right now. I'm using the lock stitch, the automatic scissors, the needle up down, 
the drop-in bobbin with the clear case. And now my little uh, tiny little <laughs> booby covers. <laughs> they're so cute. They're so, they're so tiny. No one ever said that to me before. Um, um, yeah. Did you but, talk about the needles that you were using? Yes. Good point. Um, I'm using the Janome blue tip needles. So, or you could use uh, a jersey. You want a ballpoint needle, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so because not your sharp it, needle, uh, yeah. not the one that's going to like poke through your fabric. The sharp needle pokes through your fabric. What the ballpoint needle does is moves over that stretch and stretches in there um, to become. And that's how that's that's how it was always explained to me the difference between, you know, the the. Uh, the sharp needle and the ballpoint yeah. needle. And the other reason to use a ballpoint needle is because if you, if with a sharp needle, it's actually cutting the fabric, right? Yeah. So if it's, if something happens and there's extra stress on that seam, then you could end up like ripping yep. your beautiful fabric that you worked so hard to get the perfect fit. So definitely you want to be using a ballpoint or a blue tip needle. Right, so I've got a Schmetz uh, jersey here uh, that would work, and I've also got yeah the uh, Janome blue tip needles, which are perfect for Janome machines every time. Um, so I just laid down the. Um, remember, I cut two of those um, of the bra shelf, and this is where I'm going to basically cover this up um, because now this is just going to become one unit. Um, so I'm going to treat this as one piece going forward. Now, the pattern tells me to baste. In lots of spots, it'll say optional baste. And that's because swim knit is really slippery. Uh, it is hard. Well, not hard, just harder than regular, like, you know, cotton or a woven or even a regular t-shirt knit. It is harder to keep it lined up um, because it is so slippery. Um, so oftentimes your pattern will say baste and, and sometimes, so in this case, I am going to baste it uh, because this needs to be one unit from now on. So I really don't want it shifting and moving around. So I'm, I'm putting clips uh, around uh, this, this bra, the front of the bra shelf to make this one, one whole piece. Um, and I am going to baste it because now um it really, I know it's not gonna, it's not gonna move around. Um, the pattern did say optional based for underneath the arms or around the leg holes, if you're having a hard time keeping it lined up. But I can tell you, at least from my experience, I did not feel like I needed to, to baste. I was fine just to go right to the serger and get it going. Mm -hmm. you based? Um, I have based it. Um, I base a lot if I'm going to be doing gathering or anything like that. When I'm doing swim, mm -hmm. I actually, I use a regular glue stick. A glue stick? A glue stick. Like if you don't have, more. if you don't have like a regular glue stick in your sewing kit, you need one because, okay, and this isn't the, the purple one. I usually use the purple one uh -huh. so that I can see where I'm putting it. But this, these kind of glue sticks, they're washable. So they're going to wash right out. But, but what are you, you wow. so you're sticking the fabric together? Yeah, I just, I just glue it. I go around the edge and I glue it. And then, especially if I'm surging, I don't have to stop and pull out my clips or my pins. They're just stuck together. Wow. So, and you don't find it, it doesn't gum up your needle or anything like that. Nope. And I also, when I'm taping patterns together for sewing, mm -hmm. I also use a glue stick for that. Well, the, the taping the patterns together, I'm over taping the patterns. I'm all for the glue stick on taping the patterns. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, I, I can never, A, I can never find tape, but I never really thought like, yeah, keep a glue stick right in my little sewing bin. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I use more glue sticks than my kids do at school. <laughs> Cause you can use them for so many different things. And I love that it just washes out. So I'm never worried That's about good. using, you know, some kind of glue. I have other glues that, that don't wash out and that, you know, they like heat set or whatever. And those are great, but I probably eight times out of 10, I'll just reach for my Elmer's all purpose. So I am just, I have this set on the longest uh, straight stitch 
without yep. back stitching. In case you're new to what basting is, it's just basically sewing the two sides together um, without back stitching because you want this to be able to either pull out or um, in my case, this is going to get cut off when I use the serger. Um, so I'm not too worried about any of it, to be honest. It's all going to get uh, cut off when the seams get nice and um, mm -hmm. flush in the serger. Um, but a regular basting stitch, sometimes your machine will have a basting stitch. Um, and if you have a very basic machine that you don't, or you can't figure out what's the basting stitch, um, you just, just your longest straight stitch is perfect. Yep. Um, and you can also use lines of basting for if you need to adjust fit. So if, you're, if your top is even just a little bit too big and you want to just customize that fit a little bit, you can use your basting to add gathers and just to pull that fabric in just a little bit as well. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and the whole idea too with basting is that these stitches are meant to be removed at some point or to not show or... They're temporary stitches. That's why you make it so long so that it's easy if you have to pull it or gather it um, for it to come out. All right, we're yeah. almost just to the end of the armhole here and then I will have that whole part what basted. Kind of, what kind of thread are you using? So that is a great, great question. Um, the thread that I'm using, actually Tamara, do you wanna grab the poly neon thread box on the shelf back? You know which one? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I, mean, I don't think I have it here, but I'm using, um, you definitely don't want to use a cotton, right, uh, Aaron? You want to use, yeah, like I'm it. using the poly neon thread, uh, like a polyester thread. You don't want any shrinkage. You want it to stand up to the chlorine. Um, I'm using the this one here from Madeira, the poly oh, neon thread. Awesome. Um, to be honest, I use this thread for like so much. I use it in the embroidery machine. I use it like, because it's got a nice sheen to it. I used it for all the, like the whole, sewing the swimsuits. It's been a dream for sewing the swimsuits. I gotta say, I don't it's know. It's really nice for top stitching too, because it's color fast. And so it holds yeah. up color, which is yeah, nice. It, that's what I've used. So um, try to use a uh, polyester. Um, um, I know we had these on uh, the shopping channel not so long ago. I don't know if they're still there, but they're made by Madeira. It's a good quality German thread, tons of different colors in this box, but I'm just using white and I'm uh, making sure I'm using it in the top and in the bobbin. Um, mm -hmm. So often we, but I mean, just if you've got a polyester, that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I pulled off off of my thread shelf behind me. I pulled off a spool of arrow flock. Mm -hmm. So this is really nice to use in the serger or as the bobbin thread. And okay. I'm not sure if it'll show up here. Okay. But it's, yep. it's a little bit fuzzy. It does look thicker. So it's, it's really nice. It has just a tiny, tiny little bit of give. So uh -huh. it's really nice to use in a stretch seam, but it's also really soft. So for seams that are like right attached to your skin, if you're surging and have this in the looper, or if you use this in the bobbin, it's going to feel really good against your skin and not cause extra irritation. Okay. Um, and it comes in like 11 billion colors. So it's, it's a good, it's a good one. That's very good. Also very good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So I've got the back of my uh, bra shelf. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it's so weird. It's anyway, cute. This is the back. You can see it has the lower um, like scoop in the back and then the V is the front. Um, so I've got the front and the back and now I'm gonna um, uh, baste those. Well, I guess I could surge them, but I think I'm gonna baste them together too. I'm gonna just check and see what it says in the pattern I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, we can we can actually surge these together. It doesn't really, yeah, it does matter. I think I should surge them. So I'll I'll get the serger over here. Um, all right. So we want to do always um, right sides together, and with the liner sometimes that's a little tough. But if you really look, you'll be able to see that one side is a little bit shinier. Uh, it, it'll, it'll be hard to see on camera, but one one side of your liner really is a little bit shinier than the other. Same with the swim knit. So just make sure that side 
um, and the side, yeah, and the and the side, uh, the right side is up on your the front part, and put those right sides together, and we're basically going to um, stitch the side seams right here. Um, because we do need to add a big elastic around the under bust. And that's what's going to sort of do all the heavy lifting for us mm -hmm. is that elastic. And um, I didn't attach my elastic with the serger. I use the regular sewing machine. What do you like to use? Serger all the way. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing swimwear, I definitely want to use my serger. I've, I've done like waistbands and, and all kinds of sewing where you, you stretch the elastic to fit the fabric and then you serge it and then flip it. Uh -huh. um, that is my preferred method. I find it's quick and because that's what I'm used to, I can easily do that. If you haven't done elastic on the serger before, a bathing suit is a great way to practice those okay. skills, definitely. I think you could do it. Well, I think I could do it too. I don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So, Maybe set, well, right? I, yeah, I mean, they're, uh, I'm scared. All right, I'm going to move this over. You, I'll send you a link, Jen, to a video that shows you how to unpick serger stitches really fast. Oh. And maybe that will help you feel like putting elastic on the serger with the serger. Well, yeah, the unpicking. I usually just cut it right off and make my seam smaller, but. <laughs> That works too. You know. All right. I'm, no uh, I'm using the, um, I love this serger too. Look at the pink. It's so cute with the white. This is the Janome 100th anniversary serger. Um, it also is on special price right now on um, the shopping channel. We had it on when I was on just a little while ago. You can see the item number there if you're looking for it. It's still on sale. Um, this is only going to, um, the price is only going to stay down until July 21st. That's with the sewing machine also. Um, so yeah, I love this. It's to celebrate 100 years um, that Janome's been in business. So they got to be doing something right. 100 years, that's that's 100 years. <laughs> that's a long yeah, time. Yeah, it's a long time. It's a long time. So I love this pink. And I've been keeping the serger out and up on that shelf that's barren right now because I just feel like it's so cute. It fits in. It's so pretty. And I love that that serger has the lay-in threading. So you don't have to like turn your head around to get around the tension discs. It all just lays in so easily. And it's a great machine. Um, it also has, Tamara, maybe you know the extension table. Um, it's coming with the extension table and it has the, um, the, the little catch, the, the thread catcher at the front. Um, it's rare for a serger to come with the extension table. So that's a great bundle on TSC right now. If you're thinking about a serger, um, this is a really good quality workhorse serger. And it honestly... What I love about using the serger, especially for, you know, a bathing suit is because it cuts um, while, how about I do it right here? It cuts while, uh, while it sews. Um, you get the benefit of your seams or, or your edges being super flush um, when you're done. If I was just doing a zigzag stitch here, this would all be kind of like puckering out it would look more like, even though I tried my best to cut this as, you know, as, as accurate as I could, these are still only going to line up so well. You know what I mean? When I'm putting these together, there's still going to be a part that's a little bit off or a little bit over just by the way I've cut it. See, even though it mostly lines up, the serger is going to completely take care of trimming that off while it overlocks those stitches while it maintains the stretch, which is really why, you know, people, I'll, many people say, well, I can get, I can get away without a serger for sure. For sure. You can use your regular sewing machine. Don't get me wrong. But the serger really is so great and so fast at doing this kind of thing. Okay. Um, so this is essentially constructed um, apart. I haven't done the top 
um, the shoulder seams yet because that's going to happen inside the real bathing suit. And I need to um, attach an elastic around the trunk here. And I just wanted to show you this. This is the extension table to the serger. So this is really rare when it comes to like having extra space for sewing on a serger. Um, normally, I'm just going to give this another little, I missed a little spot there. Um, look at how I can fit my whole hand across um, the bed here. Normally, I'd only have this much space to serge in, and that's what we're all kind of used to, those of us who have a serger. But having that little extra extension table that comes with the serger, this is really nice. Tamara, how's everybody doing out there? Are they staying with us? They are. No um, one's. I do have a question. Sure. Erin. Uh, oh, sure, yeah. Name, what was the name of the thread you showed everyone? For sure. It is from... It's from Madeira, which is the same brand of thread that Jen's using, and it's called Arrow Flock. So there it Arrow is. Flock. So we so Madeira has a line of thread for the serger that's called Arrow Lock. That is 100% polyester, and I think Jen, you have it on your machine. Your yep, serger it's right here. So this oh, is Arrow Lock. Yes. It's yeah. On my so. Arrow Flock is that fluffier one. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes in all the same colors that the Arrow Lock comes in. And it's, you were mentioning that it's just like a little softer on the skin. And mm -hmm. do you find that it holds up a bit better if, you, if you're like for chlorine and stuff? Um, well, it is 100% it is polyester. So there's not much that can damage it. Yeah. So I do, I do find it's good. Um, that is one thing to, to remember when you're buying elastic and stuff and, and findings for your swim. So you want to make sure it is resistant to chlorine. Um, yeah. Because chlorine is a killer yeah. on stuff. So um, the other place that you can put elastic is if you are on the larger size range where you need to have more support is you can also put elastic in on the side of your bra top. You can put it on the sides and on the shoulders and that'll just give it a little bit more stability. That's a good idea. Um, this pattern doesn't call for it, so I didn't do it, but I can see how it, it, it totally would. So if you're yeah. just starting out and wanting to, you know, get your feet wet with sewing with swim knit, um, I think you can get away with, you know, just following the pattern mm -hmm. as is. But Erin's right. Once you realize, okay, I can do this, you know, the, the fabric is not impossible to work with. It's actually working. Um, then you can sort of start to take some of those next steps. Like how do I get it a little yeah. mm, and a little more, mm, and you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like that's what sewing is, right? Sewing is about finding a pattern that fits you, that you love. And mm -hmm. so that when you wear what you've made, you feel confident because you made that and it looks like you could have, you know, gone to the store and bought it. Right. So I'm just checking out here on the pattern um, because you were talking about the elastic. So I've mm -hmm. got two kinds of elastic here. Um, yep. Both are swim. This one I just bought by the meter and this one I bought the whole roll. Um, yep. And I also wanted to point out some elastic that you might see at the store that, I mean, I have no stake in this game, you guys. No one, no one from any elastic companies is saying, <laughs> promote my elastic. No, I'm just telling you what worked. Um, in the store, the lady was like, no, I really think you should buy the clear. This is the one that stands up to the chlorine the best. And I was like, that looks like very hard to sew, but I'll do it. Um, so I did buy some because I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. But everything I've read in all the tutorials, even the pattern was showing the cotton, yeah. um, which is also, you know, for swimwear, the cotton swimmer elastic. I bought this one by Dritz. You can see I bought the whole roll um, in the three eighths inch. Um, and then I also bought by the meter, same stuff, um, but three quarters inch. And this is what I'm going to use under... Uh, the yeah. bust. And I did so with the with the clear one just to give it a go. And it immediately broke the thread like going through it, like just basically yeah. it was, like, cutting it, it just split it. And it was a total waste. <laughs> so, so what I like the clear elastic floor for is for that seam stabilizing. Okay. Um, I when you need your seams to have just a little bit more stretch. 
Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I've learned about elastic is to exercise your elastic before you sew it on. Yes. That is, that helps it to retain the shape and the elasticity a little bit better. And then we can say that we totally exercised today. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Look at me, I'm doing my exercises. Um, so I'm just cutting this for my um, under bust measurement, which mm -hmm. um, I'll say I'm proud to say is 33 inches. <laughs> okay, let's just. Fine, it's 36. No, I'm just kidding. You you do want it to be about the same as whatever your band would be on a bra. Oh, really? So let's yeah. just put this around me because I'm going by the size. Oh yeah, that's good. Got a, So it ends about here. So I've got like this much space, but you want it to, to stretch. Yeah. Because you want, that's what's going to help like keep them up, right? Exactly. Yeah. And All right. when it's, when it's stretched and tucked under nicely, you will have less tendency for the, the, the tissue of your chest to like slide underneath. Right. That, was that also is uncomfortable. Tissue. <laughs> I'm trying to be, I don't know. Is it, is it okay to say boobs on video? Like, I don't know. Well, we already did. I, yeah. So we did. I'm going to say yes. So. I'm going to say yes. We won't, we won't be any more vulgar than that. Um, <laughs> Or we could be, whatever everyone's into. Um, so Karen's asking the Serger model. Um, it's the uh, Janome um, 793PG. It's the 100th anniversary edition. I'm just doing my exercise. Whew. That, yeah. Um, how hard would it be to incorporate underwire? Oh, underwire. Dude. Well, I mean, it's a good question, right, Erin? It's not it's really any more difficult than sewing in the cups, right? Great question. Um, so I think if you want to incorporate underwire, mm -hmm. it's probably better to make a bra first because um, the, the wires for bras need to sit in a channel and there's different sizes of underwires according to your, your chest. It depends on it depends on the shape. It depends if your chest is positioned like more in the middle or if it's more on the sides. So I would say make a bra first and then you can use that bra pattern to make a, a bra top with underwire to go in the lining of your bathing suit. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, I'm just attaching the two ends of the elastic here. I've butted them together like totally flush um and i've kind of put them together like this like let me see here like like this like yeah. these are the ends of the elastic and then i'm zigzag yeah. stitching across them um yeah. basically to make a loop so that my elastic now loops right and i'm back stitching over it a, just a couple times because like, i think i kind of needed to make it a little bit bigger you can also overlap your ends if the pattern i've seen other patterns call for it where you overlap your ends about a half an inch and that works as well the only thing about the overlap is that um if you want everything to just lie super flat yeah. as flat as possible then you just don't have that's a little true. extra lump i don't know about you but i do not need any extra lumps no nope. all right and I'm going back stitch. I need to turn this machine down a little bit. So I've got it on like basically like as high as it can go, which is not good for. It's nice to have that speed control. Um, mm -hmm. You could also try with um, butting your elastic up. You could try that three step zigzag. Yep to see if that worked a little bit better at keeping it together. So on this machine, that is number eight. So let's try it. Uh, I need to go back stitch first. I've got two different foot pedals down here. I've got the serger one and the um, um, sewing machine one. And I keep, of course, pressing on the wrong one. <laughs> 
the other thing that you could do um, just to help give your elastic a little stability while you're sewing it is you could put a little tiny piece of like um, tearaway embroidery stabilizer underneath. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. It, it's looking like one pretty solid yeah. piece here. Yeah, and give it a little stretch. And if it's not, and you need to start over, just snip your elastic on either edge so you've got a fresh end to butt together. Uh, you're not trying to like sew together a frayed end. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be my advice there. So um, the pattern um, calls for um, finding, and we're almost done here tonight. Um, we'll do the the bra shelf, and then we'll continue with the with the bathing suit. But uh, on Wednesday night. Um, but the pattern calls for finding your quarters. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means like fold your elastic in half. And I'm just gonna fold it and I'm gonna add the clip um, on either end. You could just add a pin too, probably that's, and then like I'm folding it again and just make sure that your clips or your pins or whatever come, uh, come together because then you know, okay, it's totally in half. And now I can add a couple of more clips or pins, whichever you've got handy, just to basically signal that this is the quarter. Uh, you've got it in quarters because you're going to do the same with your bra shelf, which is basically, I like to find the seams at the side. And I don't think I have any clips left, so I'll just use pins. And then, and if you need to fold it in half to, to find your, your um, quarter, you can do that. Side seams together. And now I know that this right here is exactly in half. So put another pin to, to mark it. Same with at the back. And the reason you're doing this is so that you know where to match up the elastic. Because remember, the elastic is quite a bit smaller than the actual size of the bra here, the bra shelf. So um, the pattern, I just can't remember if it's right sides together. Uh, stitch under. Oh, we want to turn it right side out. So we, we don't want to have the, the zigzag of the cups. So with it right sides out, I'm going to put the elastic over top of, can you guys see? Yeah. Over top of the bra, lining up where the clips or the pins are. Then I know everything is, is where it's supposed to be. So I can take off the one and replace it with the other. And then it's going to require that there's a bit of a, looser bit of the bra and that's going to be when I when I sew it and I stretch the elastic that's how we're going to get that um, support is because that elastic is going to be sewn in stretched so so don't skip this step you definitely want to make sure that uh, you do find those quarter marks that you line up your pins or your clips and that's going to help you um, get this elastic on How are we doing there, Erin? Yeah, good. I was just going to say about quartering um, mm -hmm. the elastic. That also helps you to make sure that the stretch is evenly placed around. Yeah. yeah. And it's a much smaller area that you need to keep stretched while you're sewing instead of trying to stretch the whole thing out. Yep. You need to stretch that one little part that's as you're right. sewing. That's, that's a good point. Now, I'm going to zigzag stitch here. Uh, you could also use your serger, um, but this, honestly, this little machine is great for installing elastic. It's been mm -hmm. great for the whole, whole thing. So the pattern calls for um, the stitch to, or the elastic to kind of just hang about a quarter inch off of the bra top. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here is basically the size of my, my stitch is going to be how much there's left underneath. You don't want, you want the elastic kind of hanging off the end. Um, you don't really want the, um, the, the liner to go all the way. So Karin, maybe we could get just a little close up here where I'm going to have about this much elastic 
hanging off of the bra, you see? And I'm gonna stitch right along here. So that this much elastic, this elastic's actually gonna touch my skin. Um, so that's what this pattern in particular called for. So again, I'm gonna use a stretch stitch and I'm just um, lengthening it a little bit to a three. And now I do wanna make sure that I'm not pulling, I just put a few stitches down so that it's, it's nice and it's holding. But you'll see, if I were to just sew flat here, I'd have a big bubble at the end uh, right here because the um, I need to stretch this elastic out like this so it meets the hole, but I don't want to be stretching the lining. So hold on to the elastic, stretch it back, but let the lining lay flat. And then I'm just zigzagging down the line here. And it does take a little bit of getting used to sewing while it's stretching. The serger is a great way. You can do this exact same thing with the serger. Um, and it'll maintain that stretch. But if you're not at that spot yet, the zigzag stitch will do just fine. Totally. And you could also try um, with your other hand, you could stretch it a little bit on the other end when it comes out. And that might yeah, like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually um, wasn't having any problem guiding it through, so I did just kind okay. of. But, but when I did it before with the last bathing suits, I totally needed to um, not pull it, but guide it at the other yeah. side, um, for sure. And that's something that comes just with with practice and and being comfortable, right? It's there's no perfect way to do it. You have to do what works for you and for how you sew. For sure, for sure. Can you just tell us again what swimsuit pattern you're using? Yeah, so this is the Minute Mayo, or Mayotte, Mayo, um, for the non-French or for the French. Um, the Minute uh, Mayo pattern from uh, Patterns for Pirates. It's in the description uh, above, or I think we've got it in the comments at, at this point now also. And they have quite a few uh, swimsuits, a lot of like independent pattern companies. I was surprised how many had swimwear patterns, which is really kind of nice. There was lots of choice. This was, to be fair, the most, I wanted like a very basic beginner one piece, looks like a very standard bathing suit. There was a lot of patterns out there that were very retro and very like, you know, they were very cool, but mm -hmm. I really just wanted one that was going to let the fabric do most of the talking since my swimsuit sewing skills, I was still putting them to the test. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was like, okay, I'm fine for the fabric to kind of be the, the, the hero here. And for the pattern, it's a great, easy, perfect beginner pattern. Um, because it is so basic. And and honestly, with a swimsuit, that's mostly what we need. I think you're doing a great job. Aw, oh, thank you. All right, so now you can tell, like, there's literally not, I'm getting right to the end here. There's no bubbling, there's no extra elastic left because we because the quartering, we just, it's perfect. I'm I am gonna back stitch though, make sure this stays nice and automatic scissors. And now I can show you right up and, and do a little inspection. Make sure you didn't uh, miss anywhere. Oh, I did miss one right here. Yes, Virginia had a question. What's uh, up, Virginia? Would it be helpful to mark a quarter inch off of lining so you don't miss the lining when attaching the elastic? Hmm? <laughs> so would it be helpful to mark a quarter inch off of the lining so you don't miss the lining when attaching the elastic? I guess marking your a quarter inch on your actual um yeah i guess you could mark it um the, i guess you could mark it it doesn't really matter how you mark it whether it's am, am i understanding what she's asking right aaron i don't know like yeah, I, she's, I think, she's asking about putting a guideline on your lining piece to line up the edge of your elastic too yeah i mean you like like you the could. one quarter inch mark yeah you could 
Um, you also can pretty, you can eyeball it pretty easy. But yeah, you could line it up. But the problem is like, you're not flipping this over. So unless you're going to sew it upside down, which you totally could too, uh, one side you're not going to be able to see. So um, if you're marking it, as long as you you don't mind having them or use your disappearing marking pen, for sure. Um, that's another place where that, that basting would come in handy too, right? Because you could just sew around it with, with a basting stitch and, the, and line up the elastic with your basting mark. For sure. So that, this is it. This is the bra shelf that, you know, it did not take too long to put this whole thing together. Um, and this, the rest of the bathing suit is going to sew up like, like pretty, pretty fast. We've been on here, well, an hour and a half now. So I'm going to probably, um, wrap it up for tonight because don't sew tired, you guys. That's when <laughs> mistakes start to happen. Um, but I hope you'll tune in on Wednesday night, same time. <laughs> Uh, we'll be here. We're going to stack up the actual bathing suit pieces and get to surging all of the seams. And I hope you found this helpful. Please let us know in the comments if there's any more detail you want us to go into. Um, you'll definitely want to tune back in, though, because we are going to, A, surge all around the bathing suit, layer this up, and we're going to surge it all together in one piece. And then presto, we're going to turn it right side out, and it's all going to be in the right order and completely lined. It's a bit counterintuitive how this comes together. It comes together really fast. Um, but then we're also going to get into the elastic that's going to go around the arm holes and the neck hole, the leg hole. Bathing suits require, this was a big eye opener for me, a little more elastic than you think. <laughs> See, hmm. one, I'll put up a link um, in the comments to the elastic that we're using here. Just honestly buy it by the roll. If you're going to make more than, yeah. more than one suit, just buy it by the roll because they do because literally everywhere there's a you know opening you're gonna mm -hmm. put elastic and i i kind of thought oh there'd only be elastic i don't even know where i thought there'd be elastic at first but it's everywhere um mm -hmm. but it gets nice and hidden and it's not as e it's not as hard to install but there are some steps that you want to follow so we're going to get to that on wednesday night same time mm -hmm. same place uh i hope you will like and share this um, little part one lesson. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We'll be happy to get to them. I'll pour over them uh, tonight. And we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Thank you so much, Erin, for all of your yes, no problems. Thank you, Erin. Heart, heart, hearts <laughs> for Erin. Well, hopefully you'll let me come back. I, I tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll wash my bra and, and I won't model it, but I'll show you. All right, fair Wednesday. enough. Fair okay. enough. That's a whole different channel, the showing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks All so right, much everybody. for having me. This was really fun. Yeah, it's been totally fun. And I hope it's been useful um, information. We're going to get to the rest of the bathing suit Wednesday. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody.